shared. All right. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. I, I, um, we are all here. Uh, I know there were some technical glitches, um, but you're here now. So we are we are ready to begin when you are. Living in a uh, new world where technology doesn't always work, right? Um, but look, I think that's one of the reminders of the, the challenges in front of us is how do we leverage technology in the procurement work? So it's a good reminder. Uh, it is indeed a, an honor to be with all of you this afternoon. Thank you for being here as we kick off Blue Ribbon Committee for Procurement uh, Reform in Baltimore County. You know, across the board, we have a responsibility to provide everyone, our residents, our businesses, our visitors with a top-notch service and experience. And during the first two years of serving, we've done more than ever before to make Baltimore County government more open, accessible, and transparent. And I'm really proud of the work that we've done um, in partnership with Elizabeth and Jasmine and her office and so many others. Whether it was launching BC Stat, our first ever uh, countywide performance me measurement system to our first uh, ever open budget process where people can now go down to the contract level and find out where our resources are being spent. Uh, in, in many ways, we are truly reshaping uh, what government service looks like. You know, it, it probably not the first thing that residents think about, but our procurement processes really touch every facet of the services we provide. And while we do a lot of things good, we know that we can do better. And COVID-19 has only served to reinforce how important it is for government to be more creative, to innovate, uh, to rethink the fundamentals of how we procure the services we need. So uh, today and in the weeks ahead, I really look forward to you sharing um, your vision for how we can be better buyers. Uh, but it's not just about being better buyers, right? We also want to modernize and reform these processes so that we are both more efficient, more transparent, and that we are more ethical managers of the resources that we are entrusted with uh, by the taxpayers of Baltimore County. So this panel is critical to me. Uh, thank you all so much for serving. You will be providing our roadmap forward. And we have quite the panel, uh, respected leaders with backgrounds in state and local government, executives for large enterprises, um, and you all bring diverse experiences from across the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. We even found a way to bring back former DPW Director Steve Walsh to county government. So, Steve, good to see you again. Thank you for serving. Uh, I want to thank Philip Andrews for agreeing to chair this really impressive group. And I'm grateful again to all of you for lending your expertise, your experience, this effort, uh, because whether it's uh, about evaluating existing purchasing and contracting policies or finding ways to strengthen the impact of our MBE and WBE programs. I am confident that all of you will leverage your backgrounds and national best practices to ensure that we are strengthening the core of government. So uh, look forward to the results uh, that come forward next May. In the meantime, uh, please know that we are here as a resource. We wanna ensure your success because your success is our success and the success of the residents of Baltimore County. Um, so with that, again, thanks everybody for your service. I look forward to the results and I'll th turn things over, I think at this point, Elizabeth, to yeah. uh, Stacy. Yes, yes, please, thank Our you. Our outstanding uh, County Administrative Officer, Stacy Rogers. Thank you, Mr. CE. Good morning, everyone. Uh, again, I too would like to extend welcome to each of you and to thank you for your service in advance. Uh, again, uh, I'm Stacey Rogers and I have the honor of and pleasure serving as the County Administrative Officer. Uh, I uh, want to thank Mr. Andrews as well for serving as the chair and to all of the members for your time and commitment to helping the county meet its vision for enhancing our procurement process and physical fiscal business operations. In my role of CAO, overseeing day-to-day -day operations of the government, I am keenly aware of the critical role that our procurement process plays in our effectiveness in delivering timely and effective services for Baltimore County. Likewise, it is equally, imp equally important that we ensure that our procurement system is effective, that we are transparent, 
and that our decisions are fair and equitable in terms of the numerous businesses and providers available to provide goods and services to the county. I'm confident that the work of the commission will help us to identify ways to improve our business processes, enhance our transparency, and further engage businesses and service providers as we move forward. I wanna share a bit of background on how your work ties to our larger vision for moving the government enterprise forward toward becoming a best practice jurisdiction. I'm pleased to have with have worked with all of my colleagues to develop the county's ever, first ever enterprise-wide strategic plan. And I hope that you have had an opportunity or will take the opportunity to uh, review the strategic plan. The strategic plan incorporates many of the recommendations outlined in the 2019 transition report and of our Blue Ribbon Commission on Fiscal Sustainability. So we are moving the work forward in actualizing those recommendations. One of the key takeaways from the transition report and key actions reflected in the priorities of our strategic plan is the expansion of the county's engagement uh, with the business communities and procurement of services from small, local, and minority businesses. Through our equitable decision-making strategic plan priority, we are also focused on addressing systemic issues that present barriers to businesses and contractors who seek to do business with the county. I'd like to acknowledge uh, several of my colleagues who work diligently in this particular area of our operation. Uh, Rose Butler, Chief Procurement Officer, and her entire team, for their hard work and dedication to improving the county's procurement practices. And also Ms. Carla Tucker, who serves as our Director of Minority Disadvantaged and Small Business Programs. Uh, these two teams, along with the full budget team, work hard each and every day to ensure that we are timely, transparent, and that we make equitable decisions. But I do know that your work will enhance and give us opportunity to even grow and uh, expand and become better. One of the goals in our strategic plan, goal three, outlines strategies involving equitable decision making. Our first strategy in that goal is to sure to ensure greater economic viability and opportunity among traditionally underrepresented populations, communities, and business. Uh, key related activities under that strategy also includes a comprehensive review of the county's practices and the placement of compliance mechanisms within our procurement process to monitor fair practices in the future. I'm pleased that in fiscal year 2019, the county kicked off a uh, updated two-year disparity study uh, around minority-owned and women-owned businesses and I'm happy to share that we are in the final phase of that study. During your work, uh, that study, rec those recommendations will be made available. Uh, in fiscal year 2021, the county took the necessary steps applying national back, um, best practices to evaluate, monitor our ongoing procurement practices. Uh, the county uses PRISM compliance uh, a tool to track minority and women-owned businesses who participate uh, in county contracts. Our access to this tool uh, was gained through a contract with a minority-owned uh, company, Early Morning Software. The county also entered into agreements with the Maryland Transit uh, Authority, and we are implementing a, disadvantage, a disadvantaged business enterprise program uh, DBE, which we had not had here in the county. So I say these, uh, uh, I tell you about these key things that we've worked on during the past two years of the administration to say that this is clearly in our line of vision and clearly an area that we are committed to enhancing. And we look forward to the work that the uh, commission will do 
and to be able to take those recommendations and implement them along with our work. So again, thank you. Uh, look forward to uh, working with you. And I want to thank my colleague Elizabeth Sachs and her entire team for leading this effort and how we will interface uh, as we go forward. Once again, thank you um, everyone and uh, Chair Andrews, if there's anything we can do on the operations side, please don't hesitate to let us know. Elizabeth, I'll turn yeah. it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Um, before I turn it over to Phil, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. Um, we have a web, a web page on the county website. Uh, the agenda for this morning's meeting is posted there. Some of the other materials that we've mentioned will be posted, if not already, um, in the later today or tomorrow. Uh, all meeting dates when we determine them will also be posted to that site. And so I would say to all internal county folks on the call, any members of the public, as well as commissioners, um, that site should, should be a go-to for you because it will continue to be populated with information about and from this commission. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our chair, Phil Andrews. pulling everything together um, and we very much appreciate uh, hearing from the county executives this morning um, and from the chief uh, and county administrative officer uh, very uh, helpful to hear their goals for this commission and I'm looking forward to working with all of you uh, some of you I have had the pleasure of working with before uh, everybody's name is familiar. I thought it might be helpful to take a few minutes and I will tell you that my general view uh, for busy people is that we should all be mindful of time. I like to start meetings on time and end them on time, uh, but I do want there to be a robust discussion and we have a lot of ground to, to cover. Uh, but I thought it would be helpful if we took a couple minutes and uh, if each of the commissioners would just give uh, a minute or two of their background and particularly uh, their experience uh, in procurement and uh, if uh, Baltimore County procurement also, but it would just be interesting to know uh, what people have um, experienced elsewhere. And uh, I think that will be uh, helpful to the rest of us as we go forward. So uh, I'll start. Uh, I am a lawyer. I'm the chairman of a law firm in Baltimore called Raymond and Graham. I've been there more than 30 years. Before that, I was uh, in the Maryland Attorney General's office doing uh, civil litigation and appellate work. But I had my first brush with the Maryland Board of Public Works uh, in the early 80s uh, when um, I began to uh, see if they would approve a contract to provide privatized inmate health care uh, in the Hagerstown region. Uh, when I started at the firm, uh, I spent a few years just doing regular business litigation, but in the early 90s, I started to do work in state procurement, and that's been a substantial part of my practice. Um, I do some work in county procurement, not just for Baltimore County, uh, but, uh, some of the other counties, but probably 97% of what I do is in the state system, uh, and that's the to learn about a lot of different industries, which has been great, but um, I've also had a chance to work sort of soup to nuts on procurement matters, helping clients draft our uh, responses to uh, RFPs, um, protests or defending the order of contracts to a client, appearing in front of the Board of Public Works, litigating in the Board of Contract Appeals uh, or in courts. I've had uh, some involvement with uh, most of the public uh, partnership uh, projects that the state of Maryland has had. And um, uh, so that, that's my general uh, background. I'm um, very honored uh, to be asked to uh, chair this commission. And there are um, uh, all the good people I would, I would ever want to work with on this commission. So um, that's, uh, that's my book report. Um, and uh, let's um, let's let's go back to uh, to Carla, please. Carla, can you unmute? There you go. Hmm. 
Okay. Check on that, Phil. Do you want to go to the next person and we'll double back? Sure. Um, Delegate Morheim, may we call on you next, please? Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. County Executive and staff. Uh, John Great event last night. Just want to mention that. Um, I was in the state legislature for 24 years and I got to work. That's where I first got to know our county executive and also uh, Steve Lafferty and Eric Brownwell and others. Uh, in, in my role in the uh, legislature for many years, I chaired the subcommittee uh, government operations. By career, I'm an emergency medicine physician still on staff at Sinai Hospital, but government operations dealt with a whole host of issues, including procurement. So I was very involved in all those issues and revamping a whole uh, many aspects of procurement uh, in Maryland um, and uh, focused on efficiencies and improving service and saving money at the same time, which is what I think we hope to achieve here. So I look forward to working with you all. I also am chair of the Baltimore County Behavioral Health Advisory Council. Thank you again, Johnny O, for appointing me to, to that. And so we're struggling with all the uh, mental health and substance abuse issues. So one of the things I'll be looking at is how we can uh, work on uh, health care. And also uh, one other item I hope we get on the agenda is how we can help our Baltimore County nonprofits. Uh, the very first bill I got passed on uh, procurement reform helped uh, private schools and public schools buy things together. So everything from volunteer fire companies to others, if they could piggyback onto county purchases from time to time, whether it's fancy stuff or simple stuff like paper, we could help our nonprofit community as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Carla, can we try you again? Which I've also asked, we enjoyed working with Mayor Dixon as well. Okay. Oh. Okay, let's, we, we heard, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, good to see my ex Baltimore County colleagues, uh, Steve Walsh, prior director of public works, um, retired a number of months ago, but, uh, had spent 30 years in county government as a user and as, a, and finishing my career as director. So I think I can provide some, uh, perspective from a using agency of procurement and uh, an agency responsible for getting some work done. So looking forward to participating with this group. Thanks. Thank you. Sure, thank you, Phil. Um, as a former secretary of the Maryland Department of General Services, I served as one of the state's primary procurement aid uh, officers. And I was responsible for bringing the departments and many other agencies procurement items before the Board of Public Works. Uh, wasn't that fun? Um, I also led the agency when it up the state's original eMaryland marketplace. So I have some perspective there, historic perspective, though it may be. I've also taught public uh, finance budget. But over uh, two decades, private sector dealing with the procurement issues from the private uh, side of the table. Um, all of my clients were uh, local, state and federal agencies. And so I uh, learned from my clients about their needs uh, with regard to procurement. I'm honored to join this effort to consider how these back of office policies and procedures can benefit both the county's agencies and its citizens. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Peter? I had a little trouble understanding what you're saying. Okay, so uh, thank you all uh, for uh, allowing me to uh, participate in your uh, commission, and uh, sounds like a great idea. And I'm excited to uh, participate. Um, I have worked in the uh, 
BC construction industries for the past 37 years. <laughs> and um, uh, more or less in the highway and uh, highway construction industry. And I've worked with Baltimore County, I think so, with the uh, past 27 years. And I'm also a uh, past chairman of uh, Maryland Transportation Material and Bil Builders Association. And um, uh, also, um, I'm on the leadership council of State Highway. Um, so basically, uh, I'm very familiar with the E-Maryland Marketplace uh, uh, procurement, and it uh, works pretty well. And also very familiar with all the other uh, procurement, uh, uh, the county procurement procedures of Hartford County, Howard County that we deal with. So um, hopefully I can bring any perspective from a contractor's uh, end. So I um, also have an MBA in uh, uh, business administration and uh, civil engineering. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good morning, and I want to thank the county exec for appointing me to be a part of this commission. Um, I'll be brief. Um, in my former life as city council president, I chaired the board of estimates, which all the contracts from procurement and the various agencies um, would have to be approved. Um, as mayor of Baltimore, um, procurement and purchasing was an agency that um, was under financing. Um, we experienced a lot of challenges with making changes as it relates to um, <clears throat> procurement, setting policies, procedures, um, as well as um, um, working with the Baltimore Regional Council, which is made up of um, the various county execs and mayor where we put together um, regional bulk purchasing for certain um, areas in order to save within the various um, um, purchases that government needed to buy. For the last nine years, I have been the marketing executive director for the Maryland Minority Contractors Association, um, which from the outside looking in, um, working with minority, particularly African-American and Hispanic companies and women-owned companies, helping them um, navigate through procurement challenges that they face as relates to payment, as relates to bidding, as relates to, I mean, it goes from A to Z. Um, and so through that experience, um, I have worked in Baltimore City with the state of Maryland, um, with Baltimore County, Anne Arundel County, um, Montgomery County, Prince George's County, um, understanding and looking at how companies have challenges with navigating, particularly minority companies, and getting access not only to um, opportunities, but coming up with um, roadblocks with their various counties, in Baltimore County in particular, and trying to open up and get opportunities. So I, I'm looking forward to being a part of this commission, working with you and in, in moving Baltimore County forward. Thank you very much. If uh, if I may, uh, we are uh, fortunate to have on this extremely uh, diverse in terms of talent and um, experience group. Uh, uh, kind of counsel, councilman, uh, you're sort of next on my grid. May I ask you to uh, give us a, uh, uh, a tour of your if you put it, please. Councilman, can you can you hear me? I think you're you're muted. Okay. You can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, good, good. It's a real honor for me to be uh, appointed to uh, this commission. I know so many of you on the commission and look forward to working with you. This administration, uh, of course, is very concerned about efficiency in government, openness and transparency. Uh, a little bit about myself. I was a teacher in the Baltimore County Public Schools, then an auditor uh, in the public school system. I uh, also uh, 
represented uh, various parts of Baltimore County and the state legislature for 40 years. Uh, I served on the Health Government Health and Government Operations Committee uh, since its inception in 2003 and had the honor to work with uh, Dan Morheim, who was the chairman of the Government Operations Subcommittee. And I can tell you, he worked very hard in that position. He knows the state procurement policies uh, backwards and forward. And he did achieve uh, more efficiency uh, for, uh, for the state and uh, did tremendous amounts of research uh, all over the country, various states, what they do. And uh, so I look forward to uh, working with uh, all of you, listening to your experiences and your background, it's very impressive. And uh, I suspect we're going to uh, go pretty far. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And I am uh, from. Um, I ask. A Phillips, please, to speak next. Sorry, trying to get off of mute. Good morning, everyone. Um, and I do, uh, I too consider this an honor uh, to participate with this very distinguished group of individuals. I want to thank the county executive for uh, considering me. Um, and I also want to uh, commend the county executive on the selection of the of the individuals on the commission. Um, I am uh, I've been around this this business for almost forty years. Um, I spent thirty years with IBM, and it gave me the opportunity to see procurement from various perspectives. One, um, I led a team um, for a number of years here in in Baltimore dealing with uh, state and local government and um, the proposal process and, and, and understanding procurement from a corporate perspective. Um, later, I then became the director of our small minority and women business uh, uh, organization within the federal sector of IBM. Um, and, and like our mayor, um, it was all about the advocacy and helping people figure out how to navigate and also setting goals internally at IBM uh, for outreach for minority and women-owned businesses. Now, for the last eight years, I've been um, focused on advocating for minority businesses in my role as an attorney um, and in a project that I've been running um, that uh, is operated by Baltimore City, but funded by the United States Department of Commerce, the Minority Business Development Agency. Uh, advanced manufacturing center and so in that role we're always looking at how can we assist um, our clients with navigating uh, state and local and federal government um, the uh, i have practiced before the board of estimates as an attorney and the board of public works um, uh, and assisting clients with with uh, figuring out how to do business with government and how to move through the process I am really excited. I've served, um, I'm thinking now uh, on the advisory panels or roles that I've served dealing with procurement dating back to Kurt Schmoke, um, uh, Governor Glenn Denning, uh, Mayor Schmoke. And I've watched the evolution of procurement in our state and local government. Um, so I'm excited about figuring out how we leverage best practices that have taken place in some of the others. Um, and how you kind of cobble together the best of the best. So I'm very excited about participating in this process. Hi there, thank you. Uh, I'm Rick Benetti. I'm um, a uh, I'm representing uh, Liona. That's the Laborers International uh, Union of North America here for the Baltimore Washington District Council and also the Maryland Building Trades. Uh, we are a group of private sector construction trades unions um, and uh, proud to be a part of this process. And I'm, I'm uh, honored that uh, County Executive uh, Olszewski um, uh, appointed me here. Um, 
you, our, our, our main goal is to, um, through the procurement process, help, um, help make sure that w when the county is, is, is spending, um, that it leverages its considerable investment, whether that be through the uh, general funds or capital budget, uh, that it's best leveraging its resources to create meaningful local employment for um, uh, lots of folks in the private sector, whether they're construction workers or other um, uh, other other in other areas of the economy. Uh, w when the county I I is spending um, um, its considerable resources, um, it, it should prioritize. Uh, hopefully, it, it would prioritize um, ensuring that every cent of what is being spent is is uh, going towards uh, creating local employment at meaningful levels for local Baltimore County citizens, uh, because that benefits the county um, through um, uh, increased economic activity throughout the local economy. And and we've seen that in other places and other states. Um, from a construction point of view, I will say in the capital, on the capital side of things, um, the county does. Uh, it, it, we we just did a study um, that found roughly 54 to 55 percent of those construction contracts are actually going to local Baltimore County contractors. So, so that's good. Um, but I think there's there's room for improvement for sure, um, both on the capital side and and and, and the rest of um, county spending. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm just honored to be here, and, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot because I'm not nearly as smart as the rest of the, uh, the folks on this commission. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, and uh, Carla, if you, you want to try one more time, I know you've been having some challenges. Hear me? We can if not, next time. Can you hear me? Can you, can you yes. Hear me? Yes. Yes. So I've been. Thank you, and I appreciate you uh, giving it the, the college try there. Appreciate that. Um, I, uh, 
when I saw the list of people that I would serve with on submission, it was a extraordinary group, and uh, that's just been uh, confirmed. Uh, thank you all for uh, your um, uh, the conversation. So we get to know each other a little bit better. And, um, Elizabeth, do you want to? Um, sure. Do you want to um, yeah. Thank you, Phil. Um, just before I introduce um, our, our presenters, I just want to do a few housekeeping things. Um, the good news is that Rob O'Connor, our chief of OIT, is participating as an internal stakeholder, and so is he is on this call. So if he hears people having difficulty, he is trying to chat to you in the chat that's part of this um, platform. So please monitor the chat uh, for various instructions. It may mean we have to turn off our videos. Um, and I know we like to see each other and make it as normal as possible, but um, to hear, we may have to turn off and that may also be me. So before I introduce the presenters, um, I wanna let everyone know that among my wishes for this commission is that before we finish our work, we will be able to meet in person. <laughs> um, and I appreciate everyone's patience this morning. I anticipate a few more months of virtual meetings, but hold out hope that in the spring, um, we will be able to use a large space somewhere in Baltimore County where we can be safely, probably masked, but in person and not have to deal with technology, even though we have Rob's great support. Um, so thank you for your patience this morning. Um, now I'd like to turn it over uh, to Rose Butler, our Director of Purchasing and Sue Dubin, our Chief Transactional Attorney. So I see the presentation is up and I'd like to turn it over to Rose. Hey, thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you everyone um, on this call and for those who are serving on this panel. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to working with each of you and I am so um, you know, excited and looking for all the wonderful things to come. I do want to say that before we start presenting, I wanted to add that um, Ms. Mrs. Carla Tucker, which is the Minority and Small Business Program Manager here at Baltimore County, will be amongst us with our overview presentation. Um, so, uh, you know, taking into consideration of time, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, ja Sue, I'm sorry, Jasmine, could you be so kind to move forward with, to the next slide? Thank you. All right, Susan, um, I think you're gonna start off first and then I will jump in and just, um, just just be mindful we're kind of going back and forth we've we've um susan and i have done this for some years for quite a while so we have our you know um you know we have our in sync um way of presenting so susan i will stop and you will start and we know how to you know who picks up when thank you so um good morning i'm susan dubin i'm the deputy county attorney for transactions in baltimore county and one of the roles that my staff and I perform is to advise county agencies, including the purchasing division. I have been practicing law for almost 40 years, um, both in the private in private practice and with state and local government. I cut my procurement teeth in um, at the Department of General Services for the state of Maryland, and I've spent a good portion of my career in Baltimore County. Um, and I just wanted to give you a brief description of what the laws are that govern us. We're a little bit different than Baltimore City in that we don't have a Board of Estimates and the State of Maryland in that we don't have a Board of Public Works. Um, we are governed by the County Charter, which is um, approved by the voters. And two major provisions of the um, Charter are Section 715, which governs um, which contracts have to be presented to the county council. And for your purposes, the major ones are services contracts with a term of over two years or a, um, a procurement amount of $25,000 or more in any year. Um, and also section 902 F, which is the section that says that in the event, our preferred um, procurement method is competitive procurement, but 902F allows for exceptions when it's in the best interest of the county and competitive procurement is not feasible. To change any of that would require going to referendum if um, the county council would approve legislation, then it would have to go to referendum. In addition, the county code sets out the procurement um, 
laws, and um, that includes uh, affidavits of non-discrimination and uh, non-anti-bribery, uh, as well as procurement methods. And then um, it provides for the adoption of a purchasing manual, which once adopted becomes the primary mechanism for which um, procurement is handled. And Rose is gonna uh, talk about the purchasing manual. All right, thank you so very much, Susan. Um, and if I can just dial back, I just want everyone to know that I've been with, the, with Baltimore County since 2016. Prior to coming to Baltimore County, I served with this um, DP, DPSCS with the state of Maryland um, for approximately um, three years, but majority of my 15 years in, in my procurement field has been in the state of Maryland in different sectors of local higher education and public schools. Um, so picking up where Susan left off, um, as she just mentioned, what governs us in my purchasing department, procurement department, is the purchasing manual, and that's coming from the county's charter and the charter and the county's code. This is what we rely on in my department to make sure that we are um, obtaining, you know, the goods and services at a fair and reasonable cost, that we are being competitive, that we are being fair and impartial, um, and that we, you know, we provide guidance to the departments on how they are to write their specifications so we make sure that it's open and, and competitive and not restricted. And also we use this purchasing manual to guide us through the different types of approvals that are needed depending on the procurement methods that we are using. Um, we also rely on our policies and procedures manual, which is more of an internal uh, manager uh, manual for my buyers. It gives them the step by step, a little bit more meat and potato into what to do with different transactions through um, different transactions with the procurement um, process. And all of this is actually located on our purchase on our BC net, um, the purchasing manual and the PNP. I believe Jasmine, I shared that with you and you may have shared that with the panel. Could you move to the next slide for me, please, Jasmine? Thank you. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the delegated um, authority and this how the dollar thresholds work here at the county. Our departments uh, recently we authorized with the county executive approval. So thank, um, thank you, Mr. CE, for that. Authorizing departments to procure goods and services um, under $2,500. Now, there may be some exceptions on a case by case um, basis, but that is something that is actually, that will actually be approved by the director of budget and finance, which is Mr. Ed Blaze. Anything over 2,500 and under 25,000, the procurement department, um, myself and my designee and or my designee senior buyer, Jim Stevenson, we both have authorization to sign contracts up to $25,000. Um, Anything over that goes to the county administrative officer, Ms., uh, Mrs. Stacy Rogers for signature. And depending on the um, type of contract, it may also require county council approval. Next slide, please, Jasmine. Thank you. So these are the procurement methods that we have here at the county and our honesty is definitely no different than um, you know, any other type of entity, they all have the same for the most part procurement methods. We have our small purchases, which are things up to 5,000. Those are the things that, you know, we either do verbal quotes, try to get at least three written quotes, you know, uh, very fast moving procurements. We have our request for quotes, um, which are 5,000 to 25,000. Um, and we do go through open market competition for those. Uh, we have our request for bids, um, which is, you know, anything over 25,000, that's a form of bid process. Again, we do go through a, you know, competitive solicitation for those and the request for bids are awarded to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. Uh, we do engage with our MBE and WBE department with, um, with reviewing the request for bids and, you know, determining whether a goal can be set or not. Um, 
same as the request for proposal, we do go through the same process as a request for a bid. The only difference between that is that the award would be made to the most advantageous offer to the county. And it allows for negotiation, whereas requests for bids are a little bit more restrictive on that. Um, our other procurement process, uh, procurement methods are the sole source, uh, which means that's just only one vendor. We have the 902F procurement method, which Susan um, talked about a little bit in the beginning, and that's our non competitive um, you know, procurement method. And then we also have our emergency uh, procurement method method. Jasmine, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to briefly go through this. This is what this is the guide that I use with my um, buyers as well as with county departments to help them determine when to use a request for bid and when not to use uh, or when to use a request for bid and then when to use a, you know, request for a proposal so we can make sure that we are using um, the best procurement method that we need to use to acquire the services or goods that are needed. Next slide, please. Um, solicitations uh, for competitive procurement, they are publicly advertised um, per our regulations, you know, per law. We advertise them on the Baltimore County Purchasing Current Solicitation webpage um, that's, looking, that's located on the county webpage. And we also, in addition, make sure that we advertise and post um, the solicitation on the state of Maryland e Maryland Marketplace Advantage System. Um, Carla and myself, and I believe Carla, correct me if I'm wrong, Carla is the county's um, administrator over the e Maryland Marketplace. Advantage account, so she uh, monitors that for us. You know, takes folks off, add people, do the, the administrative work for us. We've been through the training um, in reference to the new Emma, um, and it's working well. And we are continuing to, you know, post as we are required. Jasmine, next slide, please. All right. Um, from our contracts, there's different, you know, orders that we use here at the county. We have our master's agreements, which is term agreements, um, and those are just for contracts for commodities or services that will be over a, you know, specific, you know, period of time to include, you know, renewal options. And from my master, now the master agreements, they do not encumber the funds. In order to encumber the funds, we will issue or create a delivery order, which will be against a master agreement to encumber the funds for the scope of service or specification needed from the department. And then we have the purchase orders, which is just our one time contracts, you know, our spot buys that we just need something, um, you know, right now, and it doesn't have to be something that's going to carry over a specific um, term period. Thank you. And from here, I'm going to stop and um, let Carla or have Carla introduce herself and then go over her and go over the MBE and WBE program. Carla. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope everyone can hear me. I put my headset on to try to help. Um, welcome this morning. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this. Um, I just wanted to inform you that the Baltimore County MBE WBE program is established by executive order. Um, I came to Baltimore County in 2007 and we have revised the MBE plan um, twice since I've been um, in the county. Um, Go ahead and do the next next slide. I'm not going to read the slides for you, but um, the most recent changes to the MBE program, Baltimore County um, modeled after the state of Maryland in that we now allow prime contractors that are minority or women-owned businesses to count up to 50% of the goal. We did a review of the um, state and the city of Baltimore and some other jurisdictions and we tried to come in line with some of the other jurisdictions. So that was one of the most recent changes that we made to the county's MBE program is to allow the primes to count up to 50% of the subcontracting goal. Next slide. Procurement review group. I serve as the chair of the Baltimore County Procurement Review Group. Again, I also came from the state of Maryland, uh, Maryland Department of General Services. Um, 
as I was leaving the state of Maryland, they were establishing a procurement review group to set goals on a contract by contract basis. So that process came to Baltimore County um, as well. So all contracts that are $25,000 in value and above and all service contracts that are two years or more comes through my office for review to see if there's any subcontracting goals that can be applied to that contract. Um, we also look at the contract to see if we could break it down into smaller procurements as well as shorten the contract terms. Um, to be transparent, when I came to Baltimore County, a lot of the contracts were 20-year contracts. So now we are typically recommending five to seven years on contract terms. I also um, assist the, buy the buyers in looking for restrictive language that may prohibit MBE, WBE, and other small businesses from participating in the contracts. So I look for um, license requirements to see if, if, it's, if it's something that's a national license that can be considered as opposed to a local license that can be considered um, because of subsidiaries that may be involved in that national organization um, to open up contracts. My office also reviews the waiver requests that come in under the MBE plans. Um, Baltimore County's program is similar to the state of Maryland's program with a little nuance. The difference in the review of our waiver process in Baltimore County, the M MBE waiver request must be submitted with the bid. We do not give them to give buyers, um, I'm sorry, bidders 10 days to submit their waiver request. If they did their due diligence, it should be available at bid time. So we require that at bid time. Next slide. Susan. Thank you. Next slide. Um, basically, when, as uh, Rose said, we have multiple forms of contract. And when we have something that is $25,000 or more, we use a um, what they call a white paper contract, which is a more formal contract. And either my office drafts it or if it's a um, something that fits into our standard form, then purchasing will draft it or the agency will draft it and send it to my office to review. It also includes a um, evidence of good standing from SDAT and we require that of all of our contractors unless they have no nexus with the state of Maryland. If they're you know, creating a product outside of the state of Maryland and shipping it in, then we only require that they be in good standing in um, the state of their uh, residents. Um, if there is a, so a non-competitive award, uh, justification memo comes to my office to review before it goes to the Director of Budget and Finance for final approval. And um, then we process these contracts uh, through various stages. Next slide, please. Um, you can skip, uh, skip this slide. If council approval is required, as, as I said, uh, for contracts in excess of two years, and that includes renewal or extension terms, or if the expenditure is for more than $25,000 per year. Um, next slide, please. And we also require them to provide evidence of insurance. Uh, we require generally commercial general liability, workers comp, auto insurance. And then if, depending on the type of contract, there may be specialized insurance, such as asbestos, medical malpractice, pollution, cyber insurance. Next slide, please. Um, one of the things that um, Rose and I do, Rose, Carla and I do a lot of training for the agencies. And one of the things I tell people is a contract by any other name is still a contract. I don't care if you call it an MOU, an agreement, a grant, a letter agreement. If it's an offer acceptance consideration, it is a contract and certain, you know, we have to comply with county procurement laws. Next slide, please. We also make sure that it is the county that's the contracting party, not the department. So it's either Baltimore County, Maryland or Baltimore County on behalf of the agency and contracts. $25,000 or more can only be signed by the county executive, the administrative officer, and when necessary, the county council, and for under $25,000 can be signed by the director of budget and finance or his designee. 
Next um, slide, please. We um, initially review the contracts for uh, legal sufficiency, make sure they have all of their appropriate backup documentation. And if they are, we initial it, then it gets sent to the contractor for signature. Once it's signed, it gets uploaded in our SharePoint system, which allows us to track the documents through the signing process because there are, um, there are multiple steps. It, it gets routed to the director of the agency to recommend approval, and that's to let the, um, the administrative officer or the county executive know that the agency has reviewed it and approved it. Then it goes to the finance office to encumber funds because the AO cannot approve a contract where funds have not been encumbered. Then it comes back to my office for final uh, review for approval and legal of the legal sufficiency, at which point it goes to the uh, county administrative officer. Um, and the county administrative officer will sign it unless council approval is required. If council approval is required, then the agency uploads a council action request form and an executive summary into SharePoint that lets the council know what the transaction is. It gets placed on the council agenda and if approved by the county council, then it is signed by the chair of the council and the county administrative officer after um, council approval. Uh, next slide, please. The other thing that we help the agencies with is contract administration. So once they have a contract, it's important to be proactive in how they manage it. Um, if a contractor is not performing, it's really important for the agencies to document the problems and let purchasing in my office know in writing so that that can be addressed with the contractor. And if con problems continue, it can affect their ability to bid on a future contract. Um, it also allows us to pursue claims for termination for default if necessary and uh, pursue damages because we, we like to remind the, the agencies that we're dealing with other people's money and um, we have a duty to protect the taxpayer. Uh, next slide, please. Um, if necessary, uh, we will do modifications or amendments to contracts. If something changes, there's a material change. Some of those changes may require a contract to go back to the county council or go to the county council in the first place, even if the original contract didn't. Um, next slide. And so, Jasmine, before we, um, I'm sorry, Susan, go ahead. No, that's good. So, Jasmine, before we open up for any questions, I just wanted to say, um, that, you know, over, you know, the last, you know, I want to say three to four um, years, um, Carla, Susan, and I, as she meant, as Susan mentioned before, has worked very closely together. We have um, made some updates to the, you know, 902 F justification process. Um, also, one of the things we did was create a template to make sure that the departments answer the questions um, accurately and making sure that, you know, their justification was actually a um, legitimate <laughs> um, justification. We've made some changes to our electronic process to make things run a little bit more efficiently. One of those things was implementing electronic signature, um, you know, just to get things done in a timely ma manner, not only on the purchasing side, but the payment side as well. Um, and then we have definitely beefed up our training as Susan mentioned, we do that throughout, um, you know, a few times throughout the year versus just an annual training to make sure that we are keeping the departments abreast of uh, any upcoming trainings or anything that we need them to, to make things more um, uh, efficient. So uh, with that in, if anyone has any questions, uh, we are here to answer them. Let me jump in and say thank you, Rose, Carl, and Susan, for the presentation. It's very helpful. Uh, again, because we're uh, doing this virtually, I think um, if anyone has a question, probably want you raise your hand and um, we could probably uh, let's try to do it in a somewhat orderly fashion. Uh, Delegate Morheim, you're muted though. I, there you go. Got, keep it. Yeah, got to switch. So thank you very much. Uh, first, just a request if you could 
uh, send us the links to some of the things so we don't have to hunt through the county, maybe turn the, the, the manual and the BC net into PDFs and send them to us, that would be helpful. Uh, I'll, I'll run down a list of questions. You may not wanna take the time to answer them all, but let me get them out because I was making notes. First of all, I think approximately half the county budget goes to the Baltimore County Public Schools. My kids were all graduated from Baltimore County Public Schools. Are they doing, do they do their own procurement or does it go through the county or how do you coordinate? They do their own procurement. They are governed by state law, not by county law. So they, they have a separate um, procurement process. I was, and and uh, maybe we could talk at some point, have a discussion point about how those could be coordinated. Um, observed, you know, there are a lot of savings there to be had. Is there a mechanism for unsolicited bids? And I did state legislation around that, so I will just leave it at that. But uh, there is a mechanism, or there was at any rate in state procurement. You're out in the business community, so they have a great idea. There's no procurement, but here's my idea. So we have created a mechanism for unsolicited bids. If there isn't, maybe we could uh, look at that. Um, for the MWBE, are there, I assume, standard participation requirements of net worth? You didn't mention those, but is, does it track the state version of that? Yes, yeah, so in Baltimore County, the MBEWBE program is modeled after the state. The only nuance is that Baltimore County's MBE program allows the certification of Baltimore City certified firms. And the other certification is the state of Maryland's um, Maryland Department of Transportation. We do not do our own certification. Um, the state has a very robust certifying office yeah. and staff, and I, that's the model that we follow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, before you ask your next question, sure. if I could jump back to your prior one about the unsolicited bids, the yes. only caveat to that is there is a provision in our ethics code. I'm also counsel for the ethics commission, and it says that if some if someone helps to create a specification, then they cannot bid or help anyone else to bid. So if there's an unsolicited bid, they have to be very careful that, or we would have to be very careful that we don't take anything that they've done and so that it steers it to them. Yeah, it's a tricky business because also it's people tricky. have original ideas that they don't want to share the original idea and then everybody else bid original concept, but we can discuss right. that right. later. It, it is useful in some areas. And then um, uh, you mentioned contracts that require council approval uh, seem to be a few. Is there Are there a set category of things or there services? Services, so Services. commodities, you know, pur purchases of of pencils or um, you know vehicles don't don't need council approval unless there's an equipment financing that goes along with the purchase. But any kind of service, thank you. That, that the threshold would. Two more quickie. Steve Lafferty, friend, uh, and uh, sustainability. I know that in state procurement law, we have a number of situations where. The contractor has to the procurement is based on uh, meeting certain environmental standards. I know we did that with uh, recycle computer purchases. Um, computer companies that had recycling mechanisms got favorable preference. All other things being equal, do we have that in the county? In various we, ways? Are, we are starting. Um, is Steve on the phone on the line? We are um, starting to take a look at that. We did. Um, uh, include that and modify one of our contracts to be more um, environmental friendly, but um, Steve Lafferty and I have met and discussed how we're going to move forward with incorporating that into our procurement process. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, the last thing I'd ask you all you on the front lines who are really doing the work, um, what, what areas do you see as need for improvement or how, what kind of things would you want out of this group? What are you struggling with that we can help? Did you call it look like he was getting ready to say something? I was too. So, no, <laughs> no, go ahead. That may be a topic, okay. a whole whole meeting topic, but uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Wants to weigh in, go ahead. Um, I would, say, you know, I would say just some of the things that, you know, I mentioned earlier is, you know, definitely making sure that our, our procurement process 
or what we're doing and seeing how that aligns with, you know, standard best practices um, throughout the, you know, the state as even, you know, just the nation, just kind of gauging and seeing where we are and figuring out what we could do um, better. Of course, we always want to do something more better. Um, looking for, you know, ways to be, you know, more streamlined. Uh, more efficient and um, also just increasing our competition because competition is great for procurement. Um, so that's, you know, some of the things just very few top things off the top of my head that I think we can definitely look to gain from this panel. Thank you. There's a tension between uh, going for large uh, consortium buying, but then it often excludes small local businesses who never get to bid on a contract. I saw that a lot in the state and I thought uh, somebody made the point that some contracts were going out 20 years and that ne means some people never get in it in their lifetime so I, that's, I why, that's why we did away with that yeah, um, but even sometimes three years is is good too or at least there's look backs where there's advantage of big consortiums but local businesses may have an opportunity let me just uh, I also mentioned the nonprofits if there's a way we can have as a topic um how nonprofits that are struggling for a host of reasons, greater demand and less donations could piggyback into some county purchases, that would be helpful. And the uh, last one I'll mention, and I've brought this up before, is uh, the very last bill I got passed in my 24 years in the General Assembly was House Bill 1400 of 2018, which passed unanimously House and Senate. And it allowed for consortium buying of health insurance um, in a, in a, that counties um, tend to buy health insurance on their own. So does the school systems, as I understand it. And this legislation allowed all of them to piggyback onto the state uh, purchase. There was a work group that reaffirmed that and the savings. And basically, it's a shopping exercise where whoever buys health insurance for the county, in this case, potentially the school system, which is one of your bigger line items. I can tell you from having had state health insurance for a lot of years, it's really a great program. Um, but uh, the, the, most of the savings would accrue to the county. It's essentially calling up the state, and you can do this right now. Nothing's required. The law passed. Governor Hogan signed it. Everybody voted for it. Um, you, and say, we're shopping our health insurance, and you have to talk to your stakeholder groups. And what does the state offer? The state's buying for eighty thousand people. The counties are buying for far fewer. So if you piggyback on the state program, not only will you relieve yourself of that shopping burden, but you'll get better. A coverage when I got a chance to compare plans, the state is really the best plan there is out there. County employees would get uh, better coverage and you'd get it for less money. So uh, I urge you to take take a look at that bill and the task force. I'll send it to you. Um, but I think it's an efficiency that's right there. And if, if you don't like the deal, don't take it. But if it's better, you, you can take it. Along um, those lines, we do do some um, cooperative purchasing. I know we buy salt. Um, through the state. Uh, we also participate with the Baltimore Metropolitan Council and we do our energy purchases as a consortium and some other uh, purchases as well. So we have we have looked at some of that. Well, health but insurance is a big expand. ticket item, uh, as we know. So I would urge you to yeah. take in that, that, that business. All you have to do is start making the phone calls. We can talk about this offline. But everybody supported the bill from labor unions, business, and on an, an entire legislature unanimously, House and Senate. So it's just a matter of doing that. Thank you. And this I, is Deb Schindel, if I may. Go ahead. Sorry. Please um, go ahead. Thank you. I'm with property management here in Baltimore County, and I'm very excited about this opportunity, um, particularly to work with the labor union and the building trades. Um, Similar to DPW, property management does a lot of capital projects, and I'm very anxious to see um, how we can create meaningful local employment uh, here in Baltimore County with all of the capital dollars that are funded through this com our various communities. Um, so I would love to know how we could um, do more of that, um, and I'm excited about that opportunity. So thank you. No, thank you for your comments. Um, are there questions? Yes, uh, I have a question in reference to um, competitiveness and <clears throat> agents. One of the things that I've seen and over the years is that a lot of local victims don't rotate out their procurement um, purchasing agents. 
And so they become very comfortable within their area and the companies that tend to get the contracts over and over and over seem to be the same ones. Um, is there a rotating process that Baltimore County uses? I'm so sorry, I was trying to take myself off of um, mute. So uh, in reference to the rotation currently, um, no, we, you know, we award, you know, to, you know, the lowest responsive and responsible um, bidder. So there's no like, um, you know, rotation um, process, but I will say that that has been a conversation, um, not only from the contract side, but also from our buyers, we have started to um, develop this teaming mechanism where we can move some things around so that you know, contractors are not getting very comfortable with the same buyer. So as of right now, um, there is not anything in stone, but we have talked about that and it, this thing about, um, you know, rotating, you know, things around. So thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. talking to me. You're, 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 okay, you're cracking up. Um, Am I muted? Can you hear me? Um, I wanted to know about um, the interface between procurement and the project management uh, side of it. Um, so I'm curious as to whether or not the um, SharePoint system is integrated with project management and purchasing tracking of projects. So for example, um, who's the one, is it the project manager or is it the purchasing agent who, who's gonna flag when a um, seven year contract is due to expire and needs to be reissued? Um, so currently it's the purchasing department um, I have two office assistants and they um, run reports continuously every, you know, a few every month to be honest to track when those contracts are coming up for expiration and our, um, our, our, not our goal, but our standard practice is to provide to the using agencies um, at least a nine month window when the solicitation or the contract is up for expiration. So we can, you know, take a look at it, start having those conversations on building this, you know, the specifications or the scope of services to determine what information is dated, what do we need to um, update, you know, depending on new trends and things of that nature. Thank you. And um, I'm also curious as to the Baltimore County's new open checkbook tool uh, that the county executive uh, has mentioned. And how would I use that to drill down to a contract that was awarded last year? So this is Elizabeth. I'm probably the person to answer that question. Um, right now, you can indeed search for both a vendor or if you know the department where the work was done, you can go by department. Um, I would be interested, and I'll put the link in the chat. I'd be interested if, as commissioner, you took a few minutes in the next week at that site. We can't promise that we can upgrade things, but I'd be curious on your feedback. Um, there's some ability to tweak it, and I'd be interested in how useful you find it from a procurement perspective. Thank you. Can I? Can, can I? Okay. I, I wanted to. I'm sorry. I just wanted to step back on the. Uh, the SharePoint question. Um, so currently right now, the Office of Information Technology utilizes full online project management services. We have a full blown PMO. Um, we have an integrated fiscal team and a contract specialist that works uh, hand in hand with OBF and with the Office of Law. We are currently working with DPW to establish a um, online project uh, system for them as well through Microsoft Project. But the big news that I wanted to kind of get out there as we're going to be working through this commission in 2021, we'll be working through replacing our ERP system and moving towards Workday. So as we get these recommendations and as we build towards you know a new procurement solution, that's why a, a lot of these members on here are 
um, part of the workday project as well. We want to make sure that we carry these best practices into the new system and don't repeat old ways and just, you know, do, do a forklift of our old system. So I just want to kind of put that out there that there's a lot of large initiatives that are going on on the technology side as well this year. So they tie hand in hand. And just to jump in on that, Rob, um, we'll be doing a presentation for the group in the coming meetings. Um, if it's better to do it sooner, uh, we can do that. But we are planning to share the latest detail on what Workday and other systems will do for our procurement processes. Look forward to doing that as soon as COVID and ransomware are done. I, I knew it would be in 2023. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, I know that members of the council and I, uh, we get a lot of what's called on call contracts. And uh, there's a lot of questions generated by uh, many of those contracts. So I'm just curious, uh, first of all, uh, what guidance is in the law for these uh, contracts? And uh, I, I do notice and it doesn't apply to anybody who's here today, but I do notice that uh, certain county officials in the past have been real friendly with uh, certain um, contractors and that who who are um, you know one one of these uh, on call contractors. So when you think of on call, you think well we're going to call them up and they're going to be ready to come out and resolve our problem. Uh, that's not really what they are so much. So I think that this committee would benefit from hearing about these contracts uh, and uh, making sure that uh, the county's protected, uh, taxpayers are protected, et cetera. So uh, I think we ought to look at that. And secondly, uh, I don't know if, I do know about the separation of the school system from the county as far as uh, financial, it was about any issue, all issues. Uh, I wonder if uh, considering the, the uh, ransomware attack or any other uh, problem that the school system might be having, whether it's possible for the county, for this committee to ask the school system if they would like us to look at one of their, you know, a procedure or an area uh, and and help them by uh, making it more streamlined or, or more uh, accountable, et cetera. So I guess that would be for Sue, whether or not we would have the authority just to ask them if they would like us to look into anything uh, in this regard for them. I think you can ask them, but I do think that the we have to consult with the superintendent, the state superintendent oh, of education, sure. um, because ultimately the state superintendent has the authority over the Yeah, the, you'll, you'll find that the school system is very reluctant uh, to work with uh, the county government, and I'll just drop it at that. So, so Chairman Andrews, this is Scott Phillips. Um, wanted to say um, thank you, Elizabeth, already responded to something that I put in the chat with regard to statistics so mm -hmm. that we'll have a better perspective of what we're working with and, and, and where we are. Uh, when we talk about procurement in Baltimore County, my, one of my questions was, you know, how many vendors are we dealing with and uh, how often do we have uh, new vendors? How often does someone new come into the picture and how frequently do we reaward contracts to our existing uh, vendor base? Um, that's important if we're going to kind of grow um, and expand. The second issue that is concerning to me, I know we have a, a system in procurement. I heard uh, Rose mention that they kind of stay attuned as to when uh, opportunities or when contracts are coming to an end. 
but from an industry perspective, do we do industry days so that uh, potential new vendors are also aware when these contracts are coming to an end and have a clearer picture of what the scope of work is? One of the barriers that I've found, particularly in federal, state, and local government, is when, when you have contractors who are very familiar with the scope of work, they uh, not to anybody's discredit, but they're most likely to be awarded a contract. And the only way to kind of begin to level that playing field is to have more information available sooner for potential competitors. So that's that's a that's a thought, kind of an early warning or industry days, and also some type of forecast um, shared with the public for procurements. That might be as much as 12 months out. Um, yeah. Just a couple of thoughts. So, so can I, yeah, yeah. So, um, just to um, kind of talk about some of the things that we're currently doing and not saying that there's not, you know, more, you know, things we can do, but, you know, currently right now we work with Carla's. Um, MBEWB department department we we partner with them with the meet the primes um, mm -hmm. and that is something that we do over um, at our Oregon Ridge location once a year um, to and and the purpose of that is to invite those new vendors and to you know provide them with the knowledge um, have them become familiar with you know the county's way of doing business you know our terms and conditions where to go to find our current, you know, master agreement list. So they will be able to determine when things are going to come up for expiration. Um, and in that meeting, we have the law. We talk about, um, you know, um, economic boost funds. We bring in, you know, um, Baltimore County public school. So we do have, you know, maybe one or, you know, two um, annual or yearly trainings that we do to try to pull in those new vendors. And I don't know, Susan, sound like you was getting ready to say something. I was, was going to say that as that well Carla? as uh, Carla has a, a um, meet the primes where she mm -hmm. uh, introduces uh, prime contractors to um, MBE and WBE subcontractors. And um, can I also comment, Pete, I, I, on that? Um, in addition to meet the primes and meet the buyers, I actually direct solicit to all the to the MBWBE firms for the procurements that go out of Baltimore County government um, with the weekly notification. And I also send it to the advocacy offices um, for small women and minority owned businesses when we direct when I direct solicit. Uh, there is a contract forecast available on the county's um, purchasing webpage that we posted, and it gives the contractor the contract number, description, the current contract holder, the expiration, the current expiration date, as well as the expiration date of the final renewal, and the buyer's um, name and telephone number, so that they can reach out to them. So that's actually available on the website um, now uh, as well. And we um, update that quarterly. Yes. Um, as far as other outreach events, as far as industry day, outreach actually falls under, and I'm expected to do a presentation at a later time, but just so that you know, outreach is actually falls under my office. Um, when I was originally hired with Baltimore County, that was my primary focus, but things have changed, and so I now am on the compliance side and there's no one to backfill on the outreach side. So I'm responsible for both. So if someone asked what the challenge was, that's the challenge why I didn't say anything, but that is the challenge in my, in my office right now. That, that's a fair challenge. Thank you, Carla. And Carla, you know, we work together, so I, you do a great job. I'm not, I'm not discounting anybody's job um, and what you do. And I think outreach is what I'm talking about is a little bit different. I, I've got another question because it kind of digs deeper into this. Um, much of this work falls on your office, it seems like to me, Carla. How much ownership do the individual agencies have in terms of outreach and in terms of diversifying their supplier base? Is there any measurement that the end, whether it's, whether it's general services or it's information technology or it's department of planning or it's public works, 
Do any of the agencies have something that they get up every morning and say, I need to think about a diverse supplier base? No, not, not to my knowledge. Um, Baltimore County is primarily a centralized purchasing office. So all requisitions come into the county over, I think it's over $2,500 rose. All requisitions come into the purchasing department. So that it all falls on purchasing or my office. Right. But in the decision making process as to who's awarded, who's being awarded, do the agencies have some say in that? I have to I defer to Rose. Yeah, so if it's a request for a bid, then um, we the what the departments do is just make sure that the pit bids received are in compliance with being um, responsive and um, responsible. Um, and if it, you know, that's just a request for bid process, or, you know, across the board. But if it's a request for a proposal, of course, there is a evaluation committee, and there may be some other evaluation criteria taken into consideration before the award is made. But uh, we do provide the agencies with, you know, the responses to the bid or the request for a proposal. And I want to add to the request for bid and request for proposal process that doesn't go forward unless they meet the criteria of the MBE program. Correct. So, if there's a goal in that solicitation, it has to come through me 1st for review to see if they in turn met the MBE requirement or waiver requirement um, requirements before it even can go forward for award. So, um, but the. That part of it, the agency is not involved in that. That's strictly on my office for the compliance piece. Go ahead. I'm fine. We've got we've got time to talk some of these things through. So I'm done with my questions for today. And I want to really study and. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to say, first of all, that I uh, deal with uh, purchasing on many different counties and uh, agencies uh, through uh, state highway. And uh, I think Baltimore County overall does a very good job. So uh, hats, my hats off for you because it's a lot of. Uh, uh, there's a lot of moving parts and but one of the issues um, that we as a general contract sometimes deal with is obviously the the MBE goals and uh, diversity and all that type of thing and what 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 I've discovered over the past 37 years is that it um, everybody wants to increase uh, the uh, MBE goals on on these contracts like every time a contract come out they want to increase the goals although the the uh, items in the contract themselves have not changed dramatically, so it becomes more and more difficult to uh, to to achieve these higher goals. But let me say that there are other ways of achieving good um, diversity and good participation that um, state highways actually had uh, had also discovered this as well. But um, some of the smaller we have a lot of small businesses and and uh, a lot of the MBE disadvantaged businesses are small businesses and sometimes uh, a lot of them don't want to work uh, on a large contract over an extended period of time because they're not they may not have the resources and I find that to be the case on some of these uh, large contracts so what what I've always liked to see was um, maybe a uh, a small business set aside uh, for contracts or a, a minority set aside contract. It's a smaller type contract where a, a, a younger, smaller uh, business or younger, smaller uh, uh, MBE company could bid on something like that and be able to grow and uh, and understand the whole process, you know, on a small basis and, and let them grow right away. We're trying to throw small businesses and small uh, MBE companies into a large uh, into a large contract that they can't handle. Um, you'd be surprised to see the, the, the number of uh, uh, MBEs and small businesses that do walk away from a, a, a contract. And when we're the general contractor, uh, they 
they've been other jobs and all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, we can't perform on this one anymore, you know? So we, I think we have to look at some mechanisms to help them to be successful, okay? It's not just of getting more work for them or getting all that, but it's helping them be successful. And um, sometimes a, a small, like a set aside contract would be, is ideal. So that's my point. <laughs> Thank you. If I could comment to that, yes. um, it's prohibited to do a set aside program for minority, for MBE program, but we can do a race neutral program. Baltimore County does have a race neutral program. Um, it's a small business purchase program that we put in place in 2017. The, the intent of that was to have tiering for the, um, we look at the, look at the current spend of the previous year's contract, the total spend. And then we look at breaking down in a tier in two tiers, the average price for tier one, where would it fall? So the intent was to have tier one solicited and awarded to small firms. Tier two would tend to fall where it would require MBE goals. And unfortunately what happened was companies that were that are familiar, already familiar with Baltimore County's processes, they quickly figured out that if they bid on tier one, they didn't have to do MBE participation. So they stopped bidding on tier two. So that put Baltimore County in a position that would be could be deemed as or perceived as being discriminatory if we allowed that practice to continue. So the only area that we have the tiering process in now is in professional services under architectural engineering because MBE WBE participation falls under both tiers. So well, we couldn't do it on the we couldn't yeah. do it on all procurements and, and it started out in the trades. That's where it was. Is that it was actually in the trades. And I and understand no. that the um, um, right the set aside for an MBE contract itself is not um, legal at this point, uh, but they do have it uh, set aside for just a small business. But maybe it's time that the uh, state legislature changes the law on that a little bit because I think uh, it would it would be tremendous for a small business, uh, an MBE business, to just bid uh, on a on projects where they don't have the uh, the larger businesses kind of, um, you know, uh, sucking up all that, that type of work. Um, and yeah, to me, I, I, I know it's again, it's not, the law doesn't allow it, but specifically, I'm always wondering, I know we have an attorney in here, but why, uh, why they wouldn't allow that to happen or why that couldn't happen here going forward if they, if the ch law could be changed. That's, that's just a comment. Steve Walsh has a question, I think. Thanks. Thanks. Um, real, real quick, a couple um, easy questions, I guess. One is, uh, I don't think you mentioned it, but you still allow piggybacking of contracts from other jurisdictions, correct? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? P piggybacking of other contracts with other jurisdictions? We do. Yes. Yes. Uh, and also the, the duration of contracts, you mentioned that early on, you still allow a discussion sort of case by case for uh, durations of, of relatively long, longer time frame, correct? Sort of the, the agency has to make a case if they want a five or six year contract. Yeah, we yeah. still do um, case by case. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and just a couple other items just for future discussion. I agree with Councilman Catch. The discussion of of the use of on call contracts and and uh, the administration of those. I know that that has been an item of discussion in the last few years. It, it boiled up numerous times, and I'm not sure had there ever been any formalized uh, procedures as to how those things are. Um, managed that that's a, a an item I think we should talk about. And uh, the other ones are electronic, full, elect full electronic bidding. That's one. And then contractor prequalification, construction contractor prequalification. I think uh, we should talk about that at some point as well. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Steve. Whoops. 
Phil, I think we're loot. Maybe. Phil, we, I can't hear you. Maybe we should turn off cameras. Uh, is Rob still on? Yeah, I don't think everybody needs to turn their camera off. It's only individual specific. You think Phil turn yeah, off his Phil camera? Yeah, Phil turn off his camera. It might be better. Okay. Okay. Elizabeth, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, yes, and I am either writing them down, well, mostly cutting and pasting and writing them down. <laughs> I don't know that we can answer all of them right now, um, but I am definitely collecting them and also took notes on, as Jasmine is too, on what um, Steve just flagged. Um, thank you very much, though. And. Uh... Okay. Whoops. Still, I feel we're still not hearing you well. Um, I'm wondering if you should call in. Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, well, that depends on what you want to do. You only have about 10, 15 minutes left in this. Um, well, I think... Um, and we had a we had a WebEx with Phil yesterday or the day before, and everything was fine. But it was not at ten o'clock in the morning. So I'm no, sorry. it is, it, and, and unfortunately, it is a day to day thing. Okay. As okay. Millions and millions are using the same form of okay. communication. Um, well, let's let's pause for a second. We only have some just housekeeping things. Um, I think, uh, Phil, you want to try again? Phil, Phil looks like he just chatted, which was a. The appropriate no, I'm sorry, that's not that wasn't Phil. I'm sorry, that was uh I had a copies of the slides, sorry. Yeah, I that was Phil. Um okay, hang tight everybody. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, may I ask about compliance um that was mentioned? What uh what kind of uh, checks and balances are used to verify systems and processes? Um, the most public view of uh, procurement are actually those items that go before the county council because they're discussed in public uh, workshops and, and meetings. Um, the auditor's office does a fiscal note and explains who might have had a contract previously that is getting the next contract. But how uh, does purchasing or the law, uh, the lawyers or the agencies um, implement some kind of checks and balances? Um, Rose, can you take that for us? Yes, sorry about that. Looking for my um, mute button. Um, can you be just a little bit more specific in reference to the types of checks and balances that you are um, referring to if you don't mind uh no how how do you um audit your your own processes you have delegated authorities who supervises and checks that all the policies and procedures are being followed as they're specified so it's a combination of um a group of folks, um, you know, Susan and I, we do go through and um, review and just make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do. So Susan definitely checks after us when we are um, submitting contracts, just making sure that we're following the the procedures and doing everything in the, in the accordance with law. But then we have our internal auditors that we've built a fantastic relationship with as well, that they communicate with us if they have any questions and want to make sure that we're doing things as well. So, and then our external auditors. So the combination of that group of folks helps with the, um, uh, that as well as our fiscal um, auditors. I noticed there was an audit um, in 2013 of uh, a snow removal contractor operations. Does that kind of thing happen often? Uh, Susan, do you mind talking about that since that was a little bit before? I'm afraid I don't know about that. So. You don't know either. Okay. Sorry. My question really wasn't about that particular audit, but um, are the are audits done by the auditor's office on a regular basis? And yeah. are they available? Yes. Oh, well, I, I have to, we have to check with, um, I'm sure we have to maybe coordinate Elizabeth with our internal auditors, but um, I do know that they do conduct um, audits on a regular basis. 
And then uh, there are this external is... auditors do a random audit of, of procurement processes in, in um, conjunction with our, um, our bonding process. Correct. A little, a little bit, bit better, better yeah. Well, yeah. we, um, I think uh, we can certainly, if anyone, the last conversation, uh, put uh, if you want to put it in the chat, uh, we can look into um, that question. Or, Peter, you can email me offline. I want to try to turn it over to Phil so we can sort of wrap up some of the business parts of where we're headed. And, um, also, for next time, hopefully work on technology a little bit, although I'm not sure what else we can do. Bill, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, one of the things I'm going to take, take the liberty of just trying to move us along. Um, we um, certainly wanted to solidify a date and time that we could have regular meetings. So that was one business item. Um, and then the other one was actually a list of topics. A lot of them have been flagged already through the conversation. Um, so I'm thinking in the interest of time, we, we had circulated that to the commission members and we could um, edit it based on some of today's conversation and then recirculate it and ask for email input from commissioners prior to the next meeting. Cause I don't know that we have time right now cause it's already 10 minutes to 12. Um, so I'm gonna reserve that discussion. Um, Phil, can, can you try again to connect with us? Okay, um, well, one of the, I'm wondering, apart from technology issues, if this date and time, if the second Thursday of the month um, works for everyone um, at 10 a.m. And um, I think we'll also put that in an email follow-up and get some feedback from all of you, because um, I know it's hard to, to sort of weigh in in this virtual format. Um, so those are the two things that we were planning to cover. Um, I. Apologize. It looks like Phil lost audio, which I'm not sure how to remedy that. Rob, is there any way to remedy that? Yeah, I have him log out and try and log back in real quick. I mean, it may be okay. his individual device. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Phil, yeah, I mean, we're not seeing. Here. We're not seeing. I'm sorry, but we're not seeing global. Like everybody's having an issue. That's why it's not the meeting itself. Okay. I'll I'll ask him. Um. Well, how about we do this as a vote for those commissioners? Um, I'm hoping everyone can hear me and I'll put it in the chat. Does the second Thursday of the month at 10 to 12 work for you? Yeah, it works for me. Okay, I'm going to put it. Um, and we would. We would send you a list of dates. We will, we, we are only obligated for 10 meetings out of 12. So we will not meet every single month for 2021. I, I made sure the executive order was very clear that August is usually not a good month for meetings, at least in the old life pre COVID. So, um, okay. So I'll put that in the chat. I guess if you cannot do it, please, um, let me know, uh, and Phil as well. Um, and then, as I said, we will definitely, um, revise the proposed topic list because there have been some additions and tweaks today, but then circulate it via email and ask for your written feedback um, so we can maybe at the top of the next meeting confirm it. Does anyone have any questions um, while we're hopefully gonna get Phil back on? Um, does anyone have any questions they want to ask either in the chat or verbally now before we wrap up. Elizabeth, I see a hand up. I think that's Miss um, Sheila Dixon. And the... okay, it was earlier. I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. That was earlier when I asked about the <laughs> rotating process. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm, right now, I'm just trying to uh, read all the information and and put all my thoughts together for the next. Yeah, that I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. Okay, no, no. 
It's not Zoom. This WebEx is not Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but but Rob gave us a, an answer as to why we use it, and we we stick with it despite this morning and other meetings where we have challenges. Yeah, I do um, apologize, but I, I don't want other people in our meetings as we've learned from Zoom. So. All right, well, um, we have seven minutes. Yes, I will share the strategic plan. That was on my list. Um, any other sort of documents or resources that you would like to have shared, pop it in the chat in about the next five minutes or or email me uh, and Jasmine. Oh, um, Elizabeth, on the statistics of kind of where we are currently in our, in our procurement spin, um, is it possible to break down by department um, kind of who does better than others if there is some sense? Um, I'm going to defer to Rose. Um, full disclosure, our data team called BC Staff does work with me. So I have sort of the people that know how to work with data work under me. But in terms of what's available to be analyzed, I want to see if Rose or Sue or Carla can let us all know what's what's likely to be able to be shared. Um, I will actually have to talk to uh, my report team internally and procurement to see if that is something that they can pull um, from. So, um, Elizabeth, you can, if, and I think um, Mr. Scott had mentioned some other types of reports a little early on, you know, vendor reports, you know, mm -hmm. new vendors. If you can send me a list of the types of data folks are asking for. I can see what I can pull and, you know, if I can't pull, I will um, communicate back to you okay. so you can communicate. Would that work for you, Mr. Scott, if I take a look at that? Oh, you're on mute. That will work for me. That will work for me, Ms. Butler. And thank, thank you very you. much. And also, let me publicly say thank you for helping me out uh, with the uh, program that we had uh, last week, week before last. So You're thank very you. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks everybody. I, I again really apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, I'm hopeful that that we will not have this issue in the future, and we will work to to moderate that. There's a possibility that it will necessitate a dry run. I know we all hate those. Why should we do a practice WebEx when we have to suffer through a real WebEx? But um, it may help us check on some glitches in advance. Uh, so it's possible we'll ask you of that. And um, assuming everybody was okay with the second Thursday of the month, and I didn't see anybody saying not, I, I have it on my calendar just in case it will be the 14th of January. So um, we will send out the dates but um, if you want to do a quick save the date, um, it's January 14th at 10 a.m. So we will be in touch electronically. Uh, happy holidays to everyone, and thank you so much. This was um, this was a really great discussion, and um, I'll actually be able to share that with the county executive as well, who couldn't stay the whole time. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe. Have a good holiday. You too. Be safe, everyone. Last